Outrocast. The latest single that we found out about a couple of weeks ago was Too Late to Break Your Fall. And the roots of that song, from what I've read, go back over a decade that you tracked it a few times. What was it that made you go, hey, this is a song I got to keep trying at? <laughs> well, if at first you don't succeed, keep on <laughs> keep on doing it. Um, I don't know. You know, I I cut it with a, a, a friends, a couple friends in Colorado. Um and, you know, moving to Nashville, the the level of, uh, you know, my, my players, the guys I was working with in Colorado are great guys and great players, but there's a vibe in Nashville with uh, the level of musicianship and stuff that was just really on another level. And I wanted to try it again with a different, different feel. Um, I wanted to make it much more, it, I did it kind of in a folky kind of way, uh, more of an acoustic style. And I thought the song really needed to have a little bit more of an edge. It needed to be a little more electric. Um, and I wanted to bring a sax, you know, so there was a whole different mindset to it. Um, and a lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of the choices for, for uh, you know, kind of digging back into my, my old songs was the fact that during uh, the pandemic, I had a lot of time to really revisit. And so I revisited a lot of ideas and re re reworked them. Uh, so it was really part of that whole, you know, kind of uh, looking back and, you know, having time to reflect. So this version that we're finally hearing was recorded a couple of years ago. So is there a stockpile of stuff that you're just slowly putting out besides the new albums? Yeah, a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I wanted to do, I wanted to, this is my first adventure with trying to put out um, a series of digital singles uh, without any physical component. I've never done that before. Um, but it seems like the world has moved on now and doesn't seem like there's much real, you know, I have, and one of the reasons I know that for sure is I have a basement full of CDs that, <laughs> that are just sitting in boxes. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't see any reason to make more CDs that could sit in boxes. Um, so anyway, I tried it. Uh, it's been kind of, it's been successful and, and growing and kind of, uh, you know, I've learned a lot, uh, it, you know, by taking this route. Um, so I've got, I think it's five or six songs that have been released so far. I do have a lot more. I did a, I did about four or five songs for a movie project called Gringo, which was just released recently. Um, it's streaming. It's, you can stream it. And, um, so, and I think these songs are really cool. There's a, a bunch of collaborations. One was with a, a amazing, uh, Me Mexican, uh, singer named Jimena Sariana, uh, and she and I did a duet together, and I can't wait for people to hear that. And a bunch of bunch of interesting um, things that uh, here again are still kind of sitting in the uh, in the vaults. So um, eventually, I think I'm going to start putting this uh, more more stuff out. I think I'm going to give it a little break now because I'm going on tour uh, actually tomorrow. Uh, and so I think I'll give it a little break uh, during the rest of the summer and then in the fall start releasing the unreleased stuff. And there's plenty of it. You know, there's at least an album's worth of, of music that I think I'll roll it out uh, in a similar style once a month, maybe. Well, leading into a question, you were just talking about collaborating with a great artist over there. And you have not been shy in the last two decades about collaborating with up and comers, established people, no matter the genre. In other words, Blue, that's an artist that you co-wrote with that I'm a big fan of yet Ryan Tedder is another one, et cetera. Are you writing songs like two times a week? In, in <laughs> other words, your output seems like you're writing a hundred songs a year. I, I'm writing a lot. Um, you know, here again, I'll go back to the pandemic. I, it was the first time that I kind of dis, you know, and disconnected, therefore the title of that song. It's a perfect yeah. example. Um, I disconnected from the old uh, way of just constantly being on the road, living in hotels, uh, I just, uh, I stayed home and all of a sudden things began to flow. Um, I had a chance to really reflect. Um, and, you know, I was, I was kind of on the hamster wheel, you know, from, for many, many years. And uh, I just decided it was, it was a good time in my life to do something different. So really the, the, the result of, of sitting back and not uh, doing, you know, not, not traveling and not touring quite so much uh, really was the impetus for a lot of these songs to be written. So, there are, as I mentioned, the solo albums, because I think there's been seven or so solo albums in the last 20 years. The Hole and Oates stuff, Hole and Oates still doing probably 100 shows a year. That's what it seems like. The singles, the one-off collabs. Are you creating every day in some form? Because it really does seem like it. 
I, yeah, I'm, my life is, is a creation. <laughs> I'm recreating myself. You know, re recreating is, um, if you break that word down, it, it's recreating. <laughs> and, well, uh, yeah. you know, because I do, uh, I do like to uh, recreate and I like to re I like to recreate. So um, I know that's a little stupid, but, uh, no. No, I, you know, I'm getting a chance to, I go out and I ride my, I went for a bike ride this morning. Um, I go for uh, hikes. Um, I, uh, you know, I do, I do things like that. And it really frees my mind. And then I get a chance to uh, collaborate with some really interesting people, um, uh, predominantly younger. In fact, pretty much everybody's younger than me at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, when I walk in a room, I, I've noticed lately that I'm always the oldest person in the room. Uh, most is, experienced person. Don't, you don't want to always say older. Right. Most there you go. That's a, that's a, you know what, I'll, I'll agree with that too. Um, but you know, it's just, um, I want to, I, you know, I don't want to waste my, um, my experience and I don't want to waste, you know, whatever I've got left you know, in the mental tank and the physical tank. Um, you know, I, I still can think, I can still play, uh, yeah. I still got energy. And yeah. I want I want to celebrate that and, and um, make the most of it while I've still got it. You know, I don't know if you follow me on social media, but if you do, my father just turned 100. Um, and so um, I think I got a, a little ways to go. So um, I'm kind of planning accordingly. Well, the reason that I keep bringing up the creativity and the prolific nature of what you do is because a lot of when I look at the summer schedule of of where I live here in New York whether you're playing Jones Beach or Forest Hill Stadium or Madison Square Garden you are going to be in an arena or an amphitheater or a shed every year like clockwork which speaks to your long-term success but a lot of the other people on that calendar besides you they're not I would say the number one trend right now of headlining arts is the farewell tour and the number two trend is the we're not doing any more new music. So, for example, Paul Stanley from Kiss has said, I'm not writing another song. Godsmack was saying that the other day that like what, no one wants to hear new songs. Yeah, you're taking the exact opposite artistic approach where you're going, I still got plenty to say. This is what I do. Well, I've got plenty to say on the solo side um, in terms of my individual uh, individual music. Yes. Um, in terms of working with Daryl, I, you know, right now we're not planning on doing anything. Uh, we're not planning on touring and we're not planning on recording. So um, it could change. You never know. But right now, um, I just feel like um, I'm on a roll with a certain thing that I'm doing and I'm mm -hmm. going to see it through. So um, and I'm looking for smaller. What I'm doing is predominantly playing smaller, intimate acoustic venues where I can do these uh, this show that I'm calling songs, an evening of songs and stories. And that's what I'm doing now. Um, so right. you know, playing, playing the small uh, performing arts centers, the smaller theaters, playing Newport Folk Festival coming up in a couple of weeks. Grand Old Opry. I mean, that that says a lot right there that you're able to play the Newport Folk Festival and the Grand Old Opry. Again, yeah. shout out to this that John Oates. Well, you know what? I, I'm an eclectic dude. and <laughs> I, I, I like all kinds of music. Um, actually, interestingly enough, I don't know if we've announced it yet, but on the Grand Old Opry, I'm playing with James Burton, the legend legendary uh james wow Burton. from james elvis and I, yeah james is going to come out and play with me and we're going to do a couple old elvis songs and you know something like that and just have some fun with it uh, i got a chance to play with him in london recently and we hit it off and he's amazing he's he's still playing great at his age and he's had some medical issues but he's coming back and uh, it's really a, a joy to be able to collaborate with a legend like him and and be you know part of rock and roll history so you know for me at this point in my career it's all about experiences i, I it's all about unique experiences and and things that you know um i've just uh, just decided i'm doing a show with uh, richard marks at oh. uh, the royal, Al royal albert hall uh in next may um, and I've never played the Royal Albert Hall. I've never played with Richard Marks either, for that matter. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was a, it was an availability to do it. And I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go over there and do it. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but, uh, you know, the, these are the these are the unique um, situations that are coming my way. And I'm I'm take, trying to take full advantage of it. Yeah. So to kind of recap there, Grand Old Opry, Newport Folk Festival. The playing with James Burden and Richard Marks, who is entirely a different genre where you can oh, yeah. say, okay, he, he's also the funniest artist that nobody knows is the funniest artist ever, but a lot of ballads on that end. Then I think yeah. it was Maneater that you did as a reggae version. 
Washington, right. Anara George, the the performance or two that you did with the bird and the bee, that's more of an electro pop thing. Is there a genre you haven't yet conquered? Oh yeah, Motown. <laughs> What you did at the Apollo Theater as well is there? Oh, a yeah, we did, we, we've tapped that too. No, no. The only the only thing I the only thing I don't do is is heavy metal and 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 um, uh, uh, basically uh, jazz, techno jazz. Uh, you know, or or uh, you know, I, I don't do much instrumental music. Let's put it that way. Do all the songs that you write start on guitar, or are some of them keyboard? A little bit. I can dabble on keyboards. I use it as a tool to write with. And I'll, a lot of times I just use it. Um, I'll take the keyboard and I'll just do, you know, a, I'll come up with some chord changes or maybe use it if I'm recording digitally for sampling purposes um, that, you know, to, to actually access samples. I'll do that. Uh, but um, it's mostly predominantly guitar. And, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, lyrics really, you know, kind of writing lyrics first. Hmm. And with this latest single, which we were talking about at the beginning, Too Late to Break Your Fall, you record that in a studio in Nashville. You're not yeah. a home studio artist these days? No, no. I have a, I have a home studio, but it's a writing studio. Um, it's basically just, um, it, it's laid out for writing and capturing ideas. Um, I mean, living in Nashville, you know, I have access to the, some of the greatest studios in the world with some of the greatest engineers. And quite frankly, I suck as an engineer, so... Why bother? Why waste my time? Uh, right. And got the most incredible musicians, you know, players who are who are available. And uh, so what I like to do is I like to flesh out an idea at home uh, in, a, in a very simplistic demo, but at least it's a starting point. And then when I go into the studio, I play it for the guys and I say, look, this is this is the this is the this this is the the, the seed. And now let's take it somewhere. And then, you know, with a great engineer, with great equipment. Uh, you know, and all the all the goodies, and and then these incredible players. Then we make it real. Is cycling the number two hobby behind music, and you know, keeping up the family? Yeah, I'm I'm a very avid cyclist. I've been I've been riding mountain bikes since the invention of the mountain bike back in the '80s. Um, and uh, also, I just bought my first e-bike, my first e-mountain bike, which um, I've been avoiding doing. But all my friends said I had to do it, and I finally, I finally did it, and it's life changing, uh, especially for old guy like me, experienced guy like me. Exper yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that they'll ensure you to go on tour with it being known that you're a mountain biker. Nobody knows I'm doing it. I just do it. I don't care. But plus, by the way, there's no one to insure me because I'm my own person. I'm my own manager. My pretty much my own booking agent. Um, so I, you know, if any, I'd have to sue myself. I didn't know that, that you were uh, self-contained on that end. Oh, yeah. How long has that been Completely. the case for? Oh, forever. Uh, ever since I started doing solo music. Um, now, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, I realized a long time ago that by the time I explain what I want to do to somebody, <laughs> I could have done it myself. You know, and that goes for, it goes for booking shows. It goes for uh, booking flights, hotels. You know, I've got a great, great travel agent. I tell them what I want to do. Um, Call my musician friends, find out who's available and, you know, who wants to play some like um, we're doing a band show. Uh, I leave tomorrow, actually. Um, we're going to Boone, North Carolina and playing the Appalachian uh, Festival and um, doing a full band, you know, which is kind of a lot of the guys I've been playing with for the last 15 years here in Nashville with some other other guys as well, some newer guys who I don't play with all the time. Um, so that'll be fun to do a full band show. And then I go and do uh, my acoustic show after that uh, with a percussionist and sometimes with Guthrie Trapp, who's another amazing guitar player. Right, he, I remember, was on your Live in Nashville album, but- Yeah, before... Guthrie and I have been playing together for 15 years and he and I play together, like we're gonna do Newport together. We'll do Newport Folk Festival together. And we're also doing, um, on September 6th, we do the CMA Theater in Nashville, which is an amazing theater at the Country Music Hall of Fame. Well, before I last I ask my last question, I didn't realize that you were so self-contained and self-managed. And the reason that that's especially notable to me is that you've been so prolific while also doing the shed tours, different summers and seasons and all that, that it's a wonder that you're able to be creative yet administratively sound. Were you? <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's not. I, I'm not sure if I'm administratively sound. I said I'm doing it. That doesn't mean I'm doing it very well. No, I'm. I'm just kidding. Um, no, you know what? I, I've been. I'm kind of, and I. I don't chalk it up to being a control freak. It's not that. It's just that 
I just, I, I've been doing it for so long. I know how I want to do it. I know how long I, how, you know, I only go out for two or three shows at a time. I don't mm -hmm. go out for weeks and weeks. And my, my mantra is I don't want to live in a hotel. So I, I love to play live. And I know that in, that means you got to travel uh, and that's okay, but I'm not going to be out there slugging it out, you know, slogging around living in hotels for weeks and weeks at a time. Well, two questions and then I'll let you go. And the first one is being that sometimes you're playing in an amphitheater and sometimes it's a theater and sometimes it's a club. How many different rigs do you have for touring? And are they stored like you have your West Coast rig, your Southern rig and your London rig? No, I actually I have a I have a rig in Europe that I left in Europe the last time I was over there with Beth Hart because I knew I was going back and I didn't want to have to bring it back. But when you talk about a rig, um, for me, it's an acoustic guitar with a very small pedal board about this big. Um, my electric guitar uh, is a uh, electric guitar and a pedal board about this big. <laughs> you know, wow. uh, you're not gear specific like I thought you'd be. Uh, I'm gear specific when it comes to guitars. That's for sure. Um, we're doing back like for, for, since this uh, band, full band show is a one off. We're doing backline. Uh, but, you know, nowadays backline is so good. I mean, you just tell them what you want. And, you know, a, a Fender Deluxe Amps, a Fender Deluxe Amp, you know, unless it's broken, it's going to be just fine. Unless uh, the current is the wrong current. It's, yeah, a, it's well, that's that's Europe, you know, but uh, but no, I mean, you know, I've got my vintage guitars. I got, the, you know, I got the exact uh, instruments that I want to play and um you know i just make it easy just get out there and do it you know well last question before i let you go is a stupid one is what are you watching on television at the moment <laughs> wimbledon <laughs> really okay so you're more of a sports guy than i think most people realize yeah yeah I'm, I'm, i enjoy sports you know i used to play tennis um i love watching the young the like the young players especially young american players at wimbledon i watch the tour de france because i love bike racing i've been watching that um I'm a college football fan, so when college football rolls around, I'll be watching that. Uh, you know, yeah, I like that stuff. Well, John, thank you for the many, many, many years of great art. Really looking forward to what's next Thanks. and hope to see you live in an intimate New York venue in the near future. Well, come out to one of the solo acoustic shows. I think you'll, you'll find it eye-opening, hopefully. Absolutely. And I hope we get Jay Stash finally released. Oh. <laughs> Jay Stash. Well, you never know. Listen, this stuff lives forever on the online. So you never know. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Have a great right. rest of the day. Keep Appreciate up all the great. It. Thank you. Bye-bye.